Welcome back to the Czech blog. I am here again, very happy to be here again with Warren Williams, Czech mentor and integrative health coach. Hello, Warren. How are you? Hey, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, how's the weather treating you up there? It's Seattle. So uh, as we all know, this time of year, it's rainy, rainy, rainy. But I know you are used to this being in London yourself. So we're we're of kindred spirits right now, environmentally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, so the heat the heaters are on. Yes. Even though the t-shirt is on, the heaters are on. So yeah, I know it's like. Yeah, good, good. So you're going to talk about something, a, a topic that I love because um, anybody who's in the fitness field, if, if you're on Facebook, every once in a while we'll get these photos, right, of some, some guy that's got like massive biceps, but the rest of their body is built like me, right? I mean, or, <laughs> yeah. right, right? These people yeah, who yeah, yeah. are uh, obviously really sort of enamored with the appearance of their mm. musculature, right? The six yeah. pack is, is a perfect example of this too. I mean, no matter who you are, whether you're in the health profession or not, you know, especially men, you're always seeing these, um, images, these, these ads, Google ads for get a six pack now. Right. And yeah. <laughs> I see your, you roll your eyes and they're everywhere. Right. And so there's this real emphasis on the aesthetics of, of physique, yeah. uh, rather than the function. So today you're going to talk to us about function versus aesthetic. And I think this is fantastic. Yeah. I'm so glad you set that up, um, very well. Um, just on that, I was just thinking about Sometimes when I'm watching um, combat sports, you know, you see, you sometimes see um, the, like you said, the big muscular guy yeah. fighting the little slim martial artist and the yeah. muscular guy, he's got a body he cannot use. Yeah. It looks good, but you cannot use it. And, yeah. you know, especially like with things like the UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championships, back in the early days, they used to have highly trained martial artists and then strong men mm. and just, oh, well, I can bench press 500 pounds. Surely I can beat this guy who's been trained in skills for 15 years. <laughs> yeah. How that makes sense, I don't know. And you yeah. would see these muscular guys who, and the way they train, there's no athletic component to their training. Yeah. And they would be fatigued in 20 seconds yeah. because all they do is bench six reps and six reps may last about 20 seconds. Mm. So their energy systems are based on 20 seconds of work. And then they mm. think they can do an athletic exercise that may last hours. Mm. And, you know, when we talk about aesthetics, I always say as an example as well, again, touching on what you just said, how many times have you seen a bodybuilder complete a marathon? Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Because it's not practical. Yeah. So just from the point of view, when we're talking about aesthetics, the most extreme example would be these bodybuilders. Yeah. And people that you know, are really focused on becoming bodybuilders, you have to ask yourself, if it was natural to be that size, then why not do it naturally? Why yeah. not do it without drugs? Why mm -hmm. do you need protein shakes? Why do you need you know, steroids and all these sort mm -hmm. of things? It's not natural to be that size. And if it was natural to be that size, why do you need to wake up at three, three o'clock in the morning and consume more food? Mm. It's not natural to do that because your body is supposed to be in a rest state, you know, from like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and it's supposed to be repairing. But if you have to wake up at, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning to eat, that's not natural for your circadian rhythm. Yeah. So even from a, a hormonal point of view, being that big is not good. It's not more important to look good than have sleep. Yeah. Yeah. As Paul always says, fit sick people. Mm -hmm. So straight away, we already know that's, you know, that's rubbish, you know, having this need to be that big. And like I said, show me a body that works, not a body that looks good. And I would prefer a body that works rather than one that just looks good and doesn't work because it's worse. Because people expect something out of a body that looks that good. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. It's even worse. So, you know, I wanted to like read off... Um, because I was, you know, went on, on, on Google just to actually see how they define um, function, you know, mm -hmm. just to see, you know, the general, generic, generic term for it. And so I'm going to read this off. So it's function is an activity that is natural to or the purpose of a person to operate a thing properly. Mm -hmm. And it also says to operate in a proper way. So straight away, that already tells you this is how you're supposed to do it because it's to yeah. operate in a proper way or something that is natural. Mm. So function is defined as something that's natural. And then now reading off the aesthetics, it says concerned with beauty or appreciation of beauty. Now, 
I was watching um, Top Gear. I'm sure you guys have that yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. States. Yeah. And um, I was watching just last week, actually. And um, it was so interesting because he was um, the main guy with the curly hair. I can't remember yeah. their names. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's quite funny. And he was, he was driving this car. And he says it was the most, as far as he's concerned, it's the most beautiful car in the world. Mm-hmm. And then he quoted this guy who spoke about art. Mm-hmm. And he said, the de- definition of art is the finders, the, the finders having no purpose. That mm-hmm. is the ultimate definition of art. Huh. So he was like saying, and if you think about it, if you have an art piece on your wall, it serves no purpose. Mm-hmm. What does it do for you? You can't go in the house and say, right, my art piece is making my dinner or it's, um, it generates heat for the room or, you know, it has no purpose. So they were saying the true definition of art is something that has absolutely no purpose. And so this guy was driving the car and he says, this car, it doesn't drive well. It consumes fuel. The brakes are in the wrong place. The seats are too close together. The handle, the steering wheel is, is wonky. He goes, this is art <laughs> because it has no purpose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought about that. And then when I work, read this thing on aesthetics, concerned with beauty or appreciation, mm-hmm. which is defined as art. Mm-hmm. So what we're really saying is aesthetics is defined as something that has no purpose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we look at that and then we look at function. Mm. And function is natural or, as it says, something that is natural to operate in a proper way. Yeah. So just by definition alone, we already know who's won. You know, mm. function we, wins out every single time. Mm. And, um, you know, when, when we get onto the actual um, functional component, the actual topic in, 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 its, in, in its essence now, you, what we find is you have a lot of people, um, like you said, most men typically train their upper body in detriment to their lower body and then they had they create this he-man effect now the reason why and this is so weird because they're apparently doing this to some degree to attract women and the women are the same people that laugh at this and say where's your legs so you're not training for women because if you're training for women you train the way they want you to train you'd actually strengthen your legs and have bigger defined legs now from a functional point of view the reason why that's bad is because you know when we talk about the foundation of a house mm-hmm. you know as paul's very famous saying you can't fire a cannon from a canoe mm. so if your legs can only lift 100 pounds and you don't want to train them because you're focused on aesthetics mm. but your biceps can curl 150 pounds mm. your chest can push 500 pounds mm. um and your back muscles can row 400 pounds, then mm. what's happened is the rest in tone relationship or the, in simple terms, the seesaw mm. is now tipped in terms of dynamic strength mm. to your upper body without equal rest in tone from the lower body. So you've created what we call a muscle imbalance yeah. between the upper part and the lower part of your body. Mm. Now, what we know is that when people have idiopathic pain, which is pain that is created without a direct correlation such as mm. i got hit by a baseball bat or i fell mm. off a roof i got hit by a car and okay there's pain from a direct correlation mm. if it's not then it's idiopathic which mm. just means that it's happened through your own poor posture poor breathing poor diet or poor training so we know that 95 percent of all injuries that are idiopathic are muscle imbalance related So what these people are doing, they are training themselves into pain because they're training without balance because their focus is on the front of their body or the top of their body. So when we look at, again, we're trying to use these simple terms so it's not too complicated so anyone can follow this stuff. Mm -hmm. So when we just look at this seesaw effect, every muscle has a rest in tone or a specific tension for simple terms, a specific tension that it has. And the more you strengthen the muscles, the tensile strength increases so the tension is greater. So let's say the bicep, again, we're just using these simple terms. Let's say the bicep's rest in tone is 150 pounds. Again, we're just using terms that make sense. 150 pounds. It means that the tricep muscles have to have an equal rest in tone of 150 pounds to balance the equation so that you don't have the muscles at the front of the body overcompensating mm-hmm. for the muscles at the back of the body. And you see that with bodybuilders who can't straighten their arm. 
Mm. So the rounds are constantly bent in a slight angle because the resting tone at the front is greater than at the back. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's bad is because those muscles become facilitated and they are working more than the muscles behind mm -hmm. them. And then mm -hmm. what happens is people can get bicep injuries mm -hmm. because those muscles are far too tight for the muscles yeah. behind them. So the resting tone has been altered. Yeah. Yeah. And then these people, because they're focused, like what you said, on the six-pack muscles, mm -hmm. the bad thing about that is when you train the six-pack muscles, Anytime you train a muscle, that muscle typically gets shorter unless your rest in tone on the mm -hmm. opposite muscle is equal. So the muscle gets shorter and shorter as it gets stronger. So what happens is the muscles in the front of the body, the six-pack muscles, they start to close the person down. Mm -hmm. So their rib, rib cage starts to close as well because their muscles are so strong, they're pulling the front of their body further forward. So the, the, ab the abdominal wall gets shorter, mm -hmm. starts to close down the space, and if people can't understand that, then I say, okay, if you were laying on your back and you do a sit-up, you'll notice that your body's starting to get shorter as your head gets closer to your knees. So that happens in a standing position now because mm -hmm. those muscles are constantly being trained to be short, short, short. So the abdominal wall gets shorter, the rib cage starts to close down, and then the sternum breastbone area starts to get pulled closer to the navel. And as that happens, the head must come down because all of that gravity is being pulled forwards. And as the head comes down, then the shoulders get pulled forward because the head now dictates the direction of the shoulder movement. And as the shoulders come forward and the chest muscles get tighter, the back muscles have to stretch to compensate for the tug of war in the front. Mm. As that starts to happen, the muscles in the back, the shoulder blades start to move further away from the spine. And then you start to get winging scapula or shoulders that are popping out. So then what that creates is shoulder pain. It becomes um, a shoulder, shoulder girdle pain, winging of the scapulas or, or damage in the back of the muscles. You start to get back pain because your muscles in the front are pulling everything forward and the muscles in the back are getting stretched. So imagine you had an elastic band and then you pulled the elastic band you kept on pulling and eventually it snaps and that's what's happened with the muscles in the back they're now on a long stretch for a long period of time it's constant load the head's now sitting forward constantly and that means your respiration or breathing is now being mm -hmm. affected because now everything is closed down so your ribs can't open to give you a good breath so now you tell me not you necessarily <laughs> <laughs> you i'll tell, tell you <laughs> Wait, is that really worth it? Because, you know, we breathe on average 16,000 to 25,000 breaths single, every single day. And if those breaths are being marginalized because you're so focused on looking good, then what, mean, what that means is you're going to look good and have an altered breathing pattern. And therefore, the harder you train, the more demand there is for oxygen to support those muscles as you train. But because your breathing has been restricted by your training, it's actually even harder to fuel the muscles that you're trying to support through lack of breathing in the way that you train. Yeah. So then you start to get more tired. And what we, what we always teach is um, the best posture is the one that uses the least amount of energy. Mm. So you're in an energy crisis when you train purely for aesthetics, as we just explained. So that means every single breath is restricted. But So think of it like this. This is like so clear. Your body demands a specific amount of fuel. And as you get bigger and more muscular, those muscles, your metabolic rate elevates. So your, de your body demands even more calories to sustain all these muscles that you're developing. And those calories consume oxygen as well as, you know, f you know, fats and carbs and proteins and stuff. But they consume oxygen as one of their byproducts of, of, sustain, of sustaining themselves. So they demand more energy from a posture that is worse. So your posture is worse. And because your posture is worse on every single breath and just the standing gravity, your body is now even more fatigued and then it demands even more fuel than it would have if you had good posture and muscle. Mm. So you basically, you're basically strangling yourself mm. because you demand more oxygen with poor posture and you train harder and have more muscle that demands even more oxygen. So you're basically training yourself into, as Paul's famous saying, train, don't drain. Mm. You're training yourself into a draining pattern because mm -hmm. you want to look good. 
And if you're a man, the pe- your people you're trying to look for, good for don't even like it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're like, train your legs. Mm. So it's like, what's the purpose? So, um, yeah, so you, you're basically in an energy crisis. And then what happens is, and I, I actually tr- had um, worked with a, um, a um, power lifter who had so many pains in his body and I was like saying to him, look, you just, and he, he, had, he had a competition to go to um, somewhere in America. So he was over here in the UK and he had, to go, he had a competition to go to somewhere in America in like four weeks. He goes, look, I just need you to get me to be able to lift in four weeks time. And I was like, okay, what can you normally deadlift? And he was like, I don't know, 500 pounds or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, what can you deadlift right now? And he goes about hundred pounds because my back is so bad, but I need you to get me to be able to deadlift 500 pounds in four weeks time. And I was like, what have you been doing? He goes, oh, I'm just lifting with my weight belt. And I'm like, look, you have to stop. I go, it's more important that your back heals than you win this competition. Mm. That's the mentality of all these people. So suffice yeah. it, I couldn't help him simply because mm. what he was doing was just damaging them. So, mm. um, yeah, so, when, so from an aesthetic point of view, um, when you train the front of your body, you, you're strung, you're strung, you're strung, the front of your body is very strong but very fatigued, as we explained. And then what happens is you have a naked spine, which basically means because you're not training the back of the body, the muscles in the back of the body don't have the same strength as the front of the body. And that's why you see a lot of people that have this strength, they can blow a disc in their back because there's no muscle to support that because Mm -hmm. most people don't train their lower back muscles because, or should I say, most people that are driven to aesthetic goals Mm -hmm. don't train lower back muscles because... You can't really make your lower back look great from a muscular point of view. Mm. They may train their lats and their upper back muscles, mm. which is why most people have lower back pain because they don't really focus on that when it comes to this type of training. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Um, so when uh, the other things as well is when you train, train aesthetically, um, because everything starts to shorten and compress, um, because your breathing is, is retarded, um, you lack um, what we call um, imbibition, which is pumping of the organs. So all the organs in the body go through a pumping uh, mechanism that only happens through optimal breathing. And optimal breathing can only, help, can only happen through what, what, people, what people call belly breathing or abdominal breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. And diaphragmatic breathing will not happen for those people that train aesthetically. Because when you see these people, these bodybuilder types, and they don't have to be huge, but just these people that train this way, you will see that their abdominal wall barely moves when they breathe. And it's like they have to breathe from their shoulders and neck. Mm. And that's a myriad of problems because um, if you breathe 25,000 times a day and you can't breathe diaphragmatically and your organs can't get a pump because you're not able to breathe into your stomach and allow those organs to move in the digestive system and digestive tract. And then you breathe only up into your neck and shoulders. And these neck muscles that aren't supposed to be respiratory muscles start to become hypertonic and they overwork. So then you go to a chiropractor or a physio or or massage therapist to massage these muscles that are overworking, but it does no good because you're breathing in a dysfunctional way. So as soon as you walk out of the therapy room, you breathe anyway. So your breathing pattern just comes back and you start to still get that shoulder pain. Then invariably you go back to them again. So you're basically throwing money down the toilet simply because you want to train aesthetically. Mm. So I, um, it can go longer, and longer, longer. <laughs> it could be an hour talking about that sort of yeah. stuff. But um, so that's the negatives. That's not even all of them. That's just some of the negatives of... Um, training for aesthetics now let's just switch it up and get happy and and, you know (laughs) focus positive stuff now (laughs) so um now that people have learned that um and if you are someone that's that's stuck in there and you want to get out because you've listened to this and you're like you know what i need to reevaluate how i'm training we're not saying you can't train and look good we're saying that you can train functionally and look good Mm. um there's a lot of elite athletes out there that are incredibly functional because they have to because of the nature mm-hmm. of their they have to be functional they look amazing mm-hmm. so you know we can do this let's talk about um some of those things so a few tips if you um again we've only really spoken about guys but you know women do the same thing you know a lot of women they train their lower body without having adequate strength in their upper body and it creates the same problems that we kind of spoke about, mm-hmm. but in slightly different ways. Um, 
so you know if you're um, a guy that trains their chest muscles and you want to look good so all, all we're saying especially if you have really bad posture then we would say design an exercise program where if you do two sets of chest press then you want to try and do three sets of like a bent over row or a, or a reverse dumbbell fly because you want to start to balance the systems behind you. And once you start to work out the muscles at the back, so like if you're doing bicep curls, you do two sets of bicep curls, do three sets of tricep extensions. Because we're, again, we're talking about people that are functionally in a poor position. So we're, we're saying do slightly more to the back of the body. And then what that does is it changes the rest in tone relationships of the muscles at the front and the muscles at the back. So they now become equally resistant on each side. And once you do that, in, in the field of gravity, you stand in better posture because the rest in tone is creating that. So you can't force yourself to stand upright because you'll get fatigued because you're mm. having to use so much muscle to pull you there. Mm. But if you train yourself to balance the systems, then you stand in a better field of gravity and without even having to try to mummify yourself, you stand with better posture. And therefore, you can outperform your friends who are training in bad posture. So it's a win-win because now you train, you can breathe properly and you are not in an energy crisis because you're training in an optimal angle or positioning. And, you know, when it comes to posture, you know, there's a saying, posture is a position from which movement begins and ends. Mm -hmm. But ideal posture is that state of musculoskeletal balance that protects the organs from injury. Mm. And, that, and what that basically means is the client can now train with optimal energy because um, the muscles and organs are always competing for energy. So if someone consumes 3,000 calories a day, some of those calories go to the muscles, but there are also far more important demands, such as the organs. So the liver, the kidney, the bowel, the heart, the lungs, the liver, mm. um, the adrenal glands, um, all of these, like, and even the brain is the most inefficient muscle in the body. It's like it weighs 125th of your body, but it consumes 25% of your body's energy, mm. mm -hmm. which is why sometimes you're going to have an exam and feel absolutely tired afterwards and hungry because it uses so yeah. much energy. So you've got all these systems that are demanding some of these calories. So if you're in an energy crisis and then all these things are demanding calories, it either takes away from your muscles or it takes away from your organs. And you don't want it to take away from your organs because that's more important, mm -hmm. as we know, the totem pole. Yeah. So when you train aesthetically, when you train functionally, um, you don't have an energy crisis and um, you have more energy. You breathe far more efficiently and breathing is the most, it's the most, it's the highest requirement for the body, yeah. you know, breathing you know, every organ, every muscle, every gland. And also when you breathe properly, you have more chi, more chi flowing through your body. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't need to use adrenaline to get through the day. You just use uh, chi to get through the day because the chi flow sustains you. And a powerful thing we use chi is life force is um, love. Mm. Love is an incredible, powerful tool. Um, you know, when Paul says a labor of love is mm. easier than a labor without love, that's mm. chi. That's mm -hmm. life force, that's love. So, you know, when you train in the optimal angles and because you can breathe better, you're getting more chi flowing through your body and mm -hmm. therefore you have more energy to pursue through your workouts anyway and then an abundance of energy after your workouts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people, because they misunderstand what training is, they think they have to beat up their body to feel good. Mm -hmm. And that if they go home, they have no, no more energy, that's a good workout. And mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. because... What about your organs? And what about when you have to go to work tomorrow? And what about your children? And what about your wife? And all the other energy you need for all these other people? So exercise isn't the be-all and end-all of your energy. It's just one of the things that supports your energy if you do it functionally. Um, and also, the better your posture, the better your mood. And that sounds like what? But people that are depressed typically are in a position of people with poor exercise posture, which is pronated. Mm -hmm. They have this down, down position. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, by sitting with really good posture, you actually have a better mental mindset because you're in what we call the green light posture. So you feel better emotionally when you stand in better posture. So training functionally improves your mood as well as proving your energy, as well as proving respiration, as well as proving your ability to pump organs through your body. Um, so, you know, there's a tremendous benefit to it. So, you know, what, as an example for people as well, um, you know, start using the Swiss ball. If, you're not, if you don't know how to train on the Swiss ball, 
Um, the good thing about working on the Swiss balls is it forces you to maintain really good control. And in order for you to have really good control, you have to have good posture. In order for you to have really good posture, you have to have good um, technique. And all of these things are supporting each other. Um, and so those people that train bench press on a, on a bench, you can just do a bench press off a ball instead, but it forces you to use the tonic postural system of the body, which is, again, another subject, but just real brief. When you train on machines, you use the phasic system. Mm -hmm. The phasic system is the movement-based system of the body, but the movement-based system needs to be supported by the tonic system, which is the balance system of the body or the stability system of the body. So when you train on machines, you only use about six to eight muscles because the machine is controlled in the path of the movement. Mm -hmm. So you don't use your stabilizer system, which is mm -hmm. smaller, thousands. Mm -hmm. So um, when you train on the Swiss ball, it forces you to turn on the tonic postural system, which means you're using more calories. So you're getting a better bang for your buck mm -hmm. and you're training with better technique because if you train with bad posture on a ball, you get injured. Mm -hmm. So instant feedback to awareness so it improves your awareness improves your posture improves your performance improves your technique improves your respiration improves your calorie consumption so train on the swiss ball is fantastic for that and it forces aesthetic um sorry it forces functionality out of you as well so yeah i don't know if you have any questions on that i'm kind of that's kind of what i really want to say on that um i don't know if we want to summarize everything and stuff no, I, I think that um, what you said makes sense. And, and I guess long term, it takes a long time to unwind these imbalances that you create, mm -hmm. right, through yeah. focusing purely on aesthetics. So, you know, think of it this way, too, that if you start with the functional, you know, some point of view in mind, then you don't face down the road the imbalances, but you don't also don't face the time that it takes, as I said, to unwind them and to get mm. yourself back to that green light posture and get yourself yeah. back to, you know, sort of a healthy balance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just touching on that as well, just something else. Um, when we're training athletes and when we want to train like an athlete and everybody should train like an athlete, it doesn't mean you mm. have to go and be an athlete, but if you train like an athlete, you'll be able to support your ability to hold your child or to play with your child or to run across the road to avoid that car or, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, most people that train for aesthetics, these aesthetic training techniques do not correlate to function or sport. Mm -hmm. So it means you're only strong on the bench or on mm -hmm. the lap fall down. It has no correlation yeah. to life. Yeah. That's why a lot of people that train say, I don't get it. I don't understand how I got injured. I was just picking up the shopping. Mm. But there's no technique they've mirrored that, in, that involves rotation and flexion and extension Mm. which is incredibly functional when you're picking up um, yeah. food from the car. So when you train functionally, that means it correlates to life. That means you will not get injuries or mm. it's very hard to get injuries because you train in all the patterns that life needs. Yeah. So that's an incredible benefit also. So, you know, it helps you to be strong everywhere. It improves your sex life, improves your relationships, improves your correlation to work. And, you know, it has every, every benefit you can think of. Well, I like it, uh, uh, the, the, your initial framing. It seems all to come down to purpose versus purposelessness. Yes, I like that. Yeah, that's a good frame. And uh, yeah, why, why go with purposelessness? That's a hard word to yeah, say. Yeah, 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 you made it up. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, and that's true. So it's like, why, like you just said, why train in a way that has no benefit to other, other than looking in the mirror yeah. when... You can actually look good and actually train with purpose at yeah. the same. So it's like it's a double yeah. thing. You're actually getting yeah. two things out of it. That's right. You know, at, at the same time. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's. Uh, I think that's that. That's a win-win for all people. And once they understand this stuff, hopefully they'll want to train in the functional way. Yeah, we don't usually. I don't usually mention Czech products, but the place to start is how to eat, move, and be healthy. Fantastic resource. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. I remember um, Dan Hellman, one of the Czech faculty. Um, I remember when he was teaching us on scientific shoulder training and um, he said, um, he's like, he pulled out Paul's book, how did he move to be up? And he held it up and he goes, who hasn't got this book? <laughs> and 
And they'll be put up the handy because it's a fantastic resource. It's ridiculous. It's only like $20. It's ridiculous how good this book is. Yeah. So, yeah, for those people that can't afford to work with a Czech practitioner, um, that's a fantastic resource to start with. There's great guidelines in there. Great. Well, thanks so much, Warren. Uh, this was enlightening as always. I'm glad that we could do this. And uh, I'm hoping we can do it again soon. Yeah, I'm so grateful again. For, again, for all your listeners to participate in the journey of health and well-being and whole being. Yep, and you're helping them go down that journey too. So thanks, Warren. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.